Welcome to Hypnosis Health Info. I'm Roger Moore, and with me today is Dr. A.M. Krasner, and we're here at the International Medical Dental Hypnotherapy Association and the International Association of Counselors and Therapists at the annual 2008 Hypno Expo. Welcome, Dr. Krasner. Thank you so much for being here today. You're, Thank you for having me. You bet. You're one of my teachers, one of my mentors. I've studied hypnosis with you for, for a number of years now, and, and you're just an all-around great guy, and, and I love you dearly, and, and thank you again so much for doing this. Thank you. So tell me about your experience with hypnosis and how you got started in, in a career of hypnotherapy and, and what interested you about hypnotherapy. Well, I was a I'm a psychologist, although it's not necessary to be so if you want uh -huh. hypnotherapy. And I went to a stage show with some friends at, back east, I lived in Rhode Island, and uh, I saw him changing emotions immediately, instead of gestalt and all that. So I said, if we can be done humorously, why not therapeutically? Sure. So I tried using it, and I trial and error. There were no schools of hypnosis, at least that I knew of at the uh -huh. time. And uh, I read books and trial and error, and they came up with the Krasner Method which is very powerful and very, very uh, good. I'm very proud of it. It's used all over the world. I used to go to Japan to teach twice a year for 12 years, uh, Beijing, uh, Taiwan, wow. London, Ireland, Canada, and of course this country. Uh -huh. uh, and it's still being used very extensively because it's a good method. But the thing that we fight in and the hypnosis is, I don't think I was hypnotized syndrome. Right. Because it looks different on stage. On stage, and that's what confuses people, it looks like the hypnotist is controlling somebody's mind. It's not so. You mean they, you can't control anybody else, or I can't control anybody absolutely else? Absolutely not. Okay, absolutely so, not. so what do you say to these people who are on the internet talking about the horrors of hypnosis, the evils of hypnosis, and how it's mind control and it's. Somebody can make you do something that, that Satan would have you do. I would tell them to get a life. Get a life, okay. Because it's not true, absolutely not true. If somebody came into me to stop smoking, and uh, I don't know, Doc, I don't really want to stop. My wife does. Thank you for coming in. Goodbye. Goodbye, because they be won't polite, work. certainly. So there's these people who say that, that um, they've seen people walk up to somebody on the street and hypnotize them immediately. Can that person be hypnotized who doesn't want to be hypnotized? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And no not. hypnotherapist can make anybody do something they Absolutely do not want to do. Not. They correct. have to want to do it. When people come in to see me for smoking or whatever, uh -huh. they want it or they wouldn't be there. Okay. They're not paying me that kind of money for my uh, baby blue eyes. So you can't make somebody go rob a bank? Absolutely not. Okay. okay. <laughs> I use that expression too. Yeah. I was doing a class, I'll work with somebody and they demonstrate, and then I'll say, if this gentleman wants to stop smoking, he probably will accept the suggestions. But if I tell him to go rob a bank and I look at him, I don't know about him. Let me tie this guy. Sure. For fun. Uh, nobody can make you do anything. Absolutely not. And as far as the work of the devil, do I look like the devil? Uh, well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I had a bed like yours. Oh, anyway, I see. Okay. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, they can't make it anything. And I demonstrate what I call a pre-talk before I put them in the uh -huh. house. I will tell them that they're sitting in the chair, close your eyes, they do. Then I'll say, put your hands on your, in your lap, they, or whatever, some of right. them. Put your feet together, they do. Now go stand on your head. And they don't. And they don't. Absolutely. And then I say, therefore, who has control of your mind? You or me? I want them to tell me I have control of right. them. And, uh, and the pre-talk itself, when you wake them up, I shouldn't use the word wake up, you don't go to sleep. However, when they come out of hypnosis, expect them to say, I was hypnotized, I heard everything. But what does it say in order for that? And besides, what we do is what we call convinces, they can't open their eyes. Uh -huh. Can't lift the left arm, the right arm floats up, and uh, they can't put it down. Matter of fact, it's right to put it down, it goes up instead. So now I bring them out of hypnosis, and uh, you know, I was hypnotized, I heard everything. And well, you're only, how come you can open your eyes? You get the same question every time. 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Can you lift your left arm now? Yeah. I think we could not before. And the look comes over their face. Oh, sympathize, wasn't I? Right. Yes. You couldn't get your arm down either because you didn't know. And they admit they were with that because I don't want them to Oh, the next week or next day, I wasn't really hypnotized. I heard everything. But he's right. I couldn't open my uh -huh. eyes, etc. And so the belief stays with him. What, what do you say to people who ask, what does hypnosis feel like? Like you're sitting there with your eyes closed listening to me. You well. just open and close, and that's what it, or close them and open them, that's what it feels like? Sure. Okay. Even on stage, uh, they know what they're doing up there. If they want to walk out, they will. But they're having fun. If you're having fun, would you go out? And if everybody likes to have fun. Everybody likes to have fun. So when they're up there running around looking for their butt, they're having fun. Yeah. And they know they're doing it. Oh, sure. Okay. Sure. Very seldom do they not remember. But the first few minutes, but then it comes back. Right. Uh, it's a lot of fun. <coughs> and it's very, very effective. I don't know how many people have taken up cigarettes, weight, uh, study habits, uh -huh. relaxation, in past life. Now, do I believe in past life? Well, I don't know. I've done it many, many times. If somebody came into me with a problem and said to me, you know, if I can get back to my past life, I know it, get rid of this problem, then I'm going to do it. Do I believe in it? I don't know. It could be one of three things. True, uh -huh. imagination, or memory cells in the DNA. Right. I don't know what it is. Uh, so I teach it, I do it, but I always tell my class, I don't know. Oprah just did a, a special on hypnosis and, and regression therapy, and w one of the things that I always tell my folks too is, um, I don't, really don't know and I really don't care whether there's past lives or not. I, I doubt it, I don't really think so. While I've been regressed myself and had past life experience, still doesn't make it true. No. But to me what's most important is letting go of the emotions, healing the emotions that uh, we're working with. The data, the event, doesn't make any difference. If somebody says to me, if I can get to my past life, I can get rid of this problem, all right, he believes in it. Right. She believes in it, so I do it. It's not my job. It's their belief. It's not my job to judge their beliefs. And I like to explain hypnosis as, uh, uh, ex you know, Belief and expectation. Uh -huh. You believe it's going to happen. And again, when you're working with, let's say, another a woman, a weight, we call it goal-oriented therapy. She'll see herself nice and slim and trim. I usually take them to the beach in their mind's eye. Uh, and you see a big grin on the face, you know. And it's just amazing. You see a woman come in and she's heavy, and her hair isn't done and all this. No lipstick. He says, "I'm just pride in herself." Right. And she starts to lose weight. You can see the pride. The hair yeah. gets done. Yeah. Lipstick is on, and it's a thrill for me. Yeah. And it is.